Today we will be discussing the grain size of plastic sedi bags and which is a very important parameter to identify and to analyze the different kind of plastic sedimentary rocks. In sedimentology, there are different kind of sedimentary rocks. Some we call the plastic or we call the silicic plastic sedimentary rock. Then there are chemical sedimentary rock. We also have the biochemical sedimentary rock. If you see what are the plastic sedimentary rock, the rocks which are produced by erosion and weathering, the plasts that are transported and get deposited in a sedimentary basin. So that we call the plastic rock which has the individual grains, they are accumulated at certain place and then get consolidated in the form of a rock. That we call a plastic sedimentary rock. And this plastic sedimentary rock like your conglomerate, sandstone, shale, then you can also have some volcanic plastic rock. So all these rocks which are eroded and transported and then deposited in a fragmentary texture that we call the plastic sedimentary rock. The chemical rocks are those which are formed by the chemical process such as the water column EH pH condition and that controls the deposition such as our limestone, the phosphorite, the iron formation, all these belong to the chemical sedimentary rock. The biochemical sedimentary rock are those which by the bio, biological process which gets changed and thereby it forms. Suppose our coal, oil, all these are ultimately the biological process which operate and form the kind of product that we call the biochemical sedimentary rock. Today, our main topic of discussion about the plastic sedimentary rock and what is called the sediment grain size in the plastic sedimentary rock. This is a figure which says, shows you that how really is the arrangement of the grains in a plastic sedimentary rock. You can see there are some grains which I have already marked such as large feldspar. They occur as a fragments within the rock which we call the framework grain that forms the framework like our body the bone is our framework of our body similarly these grains form the framework of the sedimentary rock what we call the framework grain then there are some smaller grains which fill the space between the larger grain which are also formed and transported along with the framework grain that we call the matrix and there are some other type of materials which will be filling, which will be filling the space between the larger grains that we call the cement. So, framework and matrix, these are the two things which are transported material but of different size grain. Cement is something which is formed after the grains get settled at certain space and the intergranular space is filled by the chemical sedimentation. Now, will come into the size range because you can see there are a lot of different size of grains. In fact, a sediment grain can be as small as 0.04 mm to more than 25-30 centimeter in size. Then how we really classify that wide range of sizes in case of sediment? That remains a huge problem in the initial stage of sedimentology that how really the grains can be classified. So the first concept of the sediment grain size that came in the year 1898 uh, uh, that is by uh, Wooden and which was further in 1914 that was revised by Wentworth that came as a concept of Wooden Wentworth scale. They devised a geometrical scale for the classification of the sediments. But you can see that the boulder, cobble, pebble, granule, sand, silt, clay all these are different classes of the sediment and they are divided from one another by some size ranges. That you can see that two, this is a millimeter scale, the 256 millimeter, 64 millimeter, 4 millimeter, 2, 1 by 16, 1 by 256. All these is the boundary of the different sizes in terms of millimeter. And how they propose this scale? They change on the higher side all the scales that is the power of 2 and on the lower side you can see that the sizes are decreasing in the power of half. 
So that how that the whole scale is divides from the plus 256 to 1 by 256 that is the different grades that was talked about by the went, uh, uh, wooden Wentworth scale. But in the initial days as you can see that the most of the grains in nature they belong to the sand, silt and granule size and those sizes mostly come in the form of fraction. So the initial stage when there were no computer, there were no calculator, so people used to struggle with the kind of calculation with these fractional values. So then the necessity came that how to change the size of the most commonly occurring grains to a positive integer and for that the concept of Klumben scale that has came into being where the phi scale is proposed which is nothing but a logarithm of the size in the millimeter. So phi is negative of logarithm of the grain size with a uh, uh, base that is 2. Why the base is kept 2? It is because that all these values they are in the power of 2. So that when we change that into the log with a base 2 that comes in the form of simple integer either in a negative sign or in a positive sign. And then this, this scales, if you see that 2 to the power 8, that if you change to the 5 value, that simply comes as minus 8. Similarly, it is minus 4. If you change to this 5 value, it comes to the plus 4. So, finally, the all the grades in the 5 scale, they comes as a simple integer, either positive or the negative. With this, this sand, which is the most commonly grade, they are further divided into this scale. That is, you can see that the very coarse, that the coarse, then medium, fine, and very fine, they are further classified between these two ends, that is minus 1 to plus 4. So, minus 1 to plus 4, all the grains of the sand that has been further classified, and that is given a further uh, detailed documentation of the how the different sizes they are differentiated from one another. Now, once this knowledge is there that how these sizes they differ from one another then the next question comes that how we measure these sizes. So the measurement of the size is the next challenge for the sedimentologist that how really we measure. Now for the larger grains suppose a pebble or a cobble or a boulder there is no problem in the measurement unless it is a non-spherical grain. Now for a spherical grain you can see that uh, we can have the measurement of the grain by means of considering this it as a triaxial ellipsoid and you can measure the triaxial it, it can be a triaxial ellipsoid so three axes of the ellipsoid can be easily measured by means of the scale and calipers and you can easily measure that how really is the size of a grain which is larger and the, it can be approximated as a triaxial ellipsoid. But the problem comes that how to measure a grain which is very irregular in shape and it is not a spherical in shape, it is a spherical in shape. So, for an irregular grain, what we see that we measure the nominal diameter of the grain. What is nominal diameter of a grain? Nominal diameter of a grain is the diameter of the grain which has the same volume with that of a sphere. That means if I have to measure this grain and I, what diameter I will, I will pick up. I will pick up a diameter like this, pick up a diameter like this, pick up a diameter like this. All these are different diameters. Then what diameter I will pick up as the size of the grain. Then the challenge comes that I will see if the volume is V, then I consider a sphere which has the same volume as that of the volume V and then the diameter of the sphere is considered as what we call the nominal diameter of a grain. So for, for a sand grain what we finally measure is the nominal diameter of a grain. Now the what are the procedure of measuring the sand grain? Normally we do measure the sand grain by means of what we call the sieving technique. So what is a sieve? A 
a series of sieves they are stacked in the form of a bank and then we put a sample by measuring it its initial weight into the topmost sieve and then shake it so that depending on the size of the grain that the whole sediment gets distributed into a number of different divisions depending on the size of the opening of the sieve so if you see that this 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 open size of opening is steadily decreasing and finally we go to up to 0.4 to 0.3 mm size of the sieve that below which we really do not differentiate the different grains because of its cohesive action so we we put the grain the sediment into the top sieve and then shake it and differentiate the sieve uh, the the weights onto the on a particular sieve into different fraction depending into the proportion of its original presence into the uh, original sediment so if we start with a volume v it gets divided into several volumes v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus v4 depending on the size of the openings so this is how we measure the size of the sand and then finally the, uh, we, i will end this discussion with uh, the, uh, the kind of measurement we do with for the mud size now the problem with measuring the size of the mud size grain is that they are very cohesive and they get stuck to one another and form a lump so how to measure the size of a grain which is mud size and for that we take the help of what we call the stokes law stokes law and what is stokes law stokes law it says that x6 pi mu v r it is equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube g del rho so the, this is where mu is mu is viscosity del rho is density difference between grain and fluid r is grain diameter then and g is acceleration to gravity so what we do that we prepare a solution of our sample a homogeneous solution of our sample in a in 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 water and make it a uniform solution so that there is no density difference from the top and bottom of the solution and so from that uniform solution if a grain that settles by the gravity then it will be acted upon by the buoyancy force with it so for a steady movement of a grain for a steady settling of a grain these two forces that will be balancing one another so what we will get that will from this equation we identify that what is the grain size of the grain and then we based plot that in the grain size plot diagram so the this is the technique by which the different grain sizes are identified and they are classified in terms of wooden and at the crumb and scale and finally that grain size is used in terms of different diagram from analysis of the sediment provenance sediment transportation history and the sediment deposition history